Hello from the Forcetronics YouTube channel. Welcome to Combining Arduino, Android, and the Cloud. And this is part two in a three-part series. In part one, we looked at how to send data to the cloud, store data on the cloud from our Wi-Fi enabled Arduinos. In part two, we're gonna grab that data from the cloud and display it on an Android app. So let's get started. Okay, here's the plan, and the plan is basically what I just stated. In part two, though, we're going to grab that data from the cloud and display it on an Android app. What we're going to use to create the Android app is MIT's App Inventor 2, which is a web browser hosted programming interface. It's graphical programming, so it's real easy to use. It's open source. So that's what we're going to use to create the Android app, and we'll look at that. We're using the Arduino Maker 1000 and the Spark Funds The Thing ESP8266 as our Wi Fi nodes. This time we actually have some sensors hooked up to them, so we have some more interesting data. So for the ESP8266, we have a resistive light sensor, and I'll show that set up in the video. And then for the Maker 1000, we have the popular TMP36 analog temperature sensor. And then for the cloud tool that we're using, we're using Font, which is an open source platform by SparkFun. You know, I showed it in part one. We looked at how to put data on it. Now we're gonna look at how to take data from it. So let's start back at the data on the cloud that we'll be grabbing. So this is just meant to be a reminder from part one. We were sending ADC data from our two nodes. We have our fields, here's the ADC data. You can see we don't just have VCC data, we actually have I'll say real data now with our with our light sensor and our temperature sensor. And then our other field is Wi-Fi node so we can identify them. So the, I think Wi-Fi node number two is the Maker 1000, I believe, and Wi-Fi one is ESP8266. So this is, this is where we're gonna be accessing our data. This is in part one, this is where the Arduinos were sending it. This is where we're gonna be grabbing it with the Android app. Let's look at how you grab the data from, from the, the cloud. So this, these examples of how you get data are straight out of the documentation. So you can go to their website, here is, here is the link. When I say there, theirs, I'm talking about the font cloud program from SparkFun. And here's where you'll grab the data. One thing I'll mention before I get into this is, in the video one, I talked about how they have the keys to do encryption. A smart, a smart watcher actually mentioned in the comments in part one that, hey, you know, these are probably more just used for passwords to access the cloud. You know, unless you have encryption on the Arduino side, it's important to note that a quote unquote man in the middle attack could look at what data you're sending in this sort of web address uh, and probably intercept it and, and look at it. So unless you have encryption in the Arduino side as well, keep in mind that you probably don't want to send like bank data or anything over the web. If you're just sending temperature data or things like that, no one can really do anything and no one really cares. Okay, with that said, how do we get data from the cloud? So we're, we're gonna use sort of these web service get functions, or I'll say commands using um, you know web addresses. So here's an example of how you would get a JSON file of data. So you have your data on the web. What if you wanna get all that data? Here you would use this web address with your public key and .json for a JSON file. You can also do .csv for, to get a CSV file. What if you just want to get your, your data in text form, for instance? Well, you can still use a .csv, question mark, page, page number one. That'll grab, I think, about up to 250K worth of data, comma separated data, and it'll just be in text form so you can parse through it and get the information you want out of it. Um, but they also have filters, so if you don't want to grab all the data, you can actually use some of their greater than, equal to, less than filters to get the data you want. And that's actually what we're going to use in the app. So as an example, once again, here's where you would put your key, but I have question mark and EQ means equal to, and then you state your field. So I'm going to state my field Wi-Fi node, and then I'll say equals one. So when I put this in the web browser, all the data from node one will show up and not the data from node two. And then if I change this to a two, it'd be node two. So let's look a quick example of that in the web browser. Okay, here we are. I'm not showing the, the address because it has my key in it, but basically it grabs the field headings and the timestamp heading, and it's gonna grab all the data for Wi-Fi node one. So one, one, one. Now, if we just grabbed a whole page, it would have both. 
but this is just a way to sort of lessen the amount of data you're grabbing. Notice that this is all comma, comma separated. So, you know, if you want to display in our app, we'll see when we want to display the information we're interested in, we have to sort of parse through it and grab it. Okay, with that said, let's look at the app in action before we look at the code for the app. Okay, here we are with a video of just the app in action. Now here is the ESP8266. Here's the light sensor, the resistive light sensor. It's in series with another resistor. That resistor is connected to VCC. The other end of the light sensor is connected to ground. And then the ADC pin, which the ADC on the uh, ESP8266 only goes up to one volt. So here we're gonna read the voltage. As light goes up, the resistance of this goes down. So the voltage will drop. And as it gets darker, the resistance goes up. And so you have a higher voltage drop. And so you know it's dark. And what we'll do on the app, well, you'll see what we're gonna do in the app. We're gonna show images based on the, the light level. Okay, so that's the ESP8266. Here is the Maker 1000 in all of its glory. Just a reminder, if you're interested in the Maker 1000, I sell them on my store, forstronics.com, so check that out. Here we have the TMP36. So I have ground and power, and then I'm reading the ADC from the middle pin. And this is just gonna give me you know, an analog value, an ADC value, I actually send that ADC value to the cloud and then I let the app convert it to a temperature. So it's just sending raw ADC data to the cloud. Here I have my phone. If you notice, I'm pretty clumsy. I have a crack in the screen. I actually have another crack too at the bottom, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, I'm actually not connected to Wi-Fi on the phone. I'm actually just connected to the cellular network just to kind of show you that I can use this app anywhere to get the data from the cloud. Now here is the app icon that I've loaded on my phone. This is just the default icon because I didn't load in a special icon. So I'm gonna press that. It's gonna open up the app. I'm gonna press get data. You see an image pop up and you see a temperature pop up. So I think I actually have the nodes mixed up here. This should be node two and this should be node one, but it, it really doesn't matter. So here's the data from the Maker 1000, 19.9 degrees Celsius, which is about 68, 69 degrees. Here I show the ADC value from the ESP8266. And what I do is based on what it is, I'll show an image either sunny, a partly cloudy, or a moon. Okay, so that's, that's an example of the app in action. I'm just gonna show another quick video to show a, a little changing the data a bit and see what happens on the app. So here we are with the app again. I press get data again, and we can see the data changed a bit. So what I did is I put a cover over the light sensor so it was dark, and then I put my hand on the temperature sensor so the, the temperature went up. You know, that new data was communicated to the cloud. I pressed get data, and so now we're up about a degree and then you know the ADC value jumped up here because it's dark, the resistance is higher, and then basically it shows a moon sticking out its, its tongue. So once again, this, this app is just meant to be an example. Uh, it's not meant to be a finished app, it's just more of an example to show some of the stuff you can do. Let's look at the code for the app. Okay, here we are at the app, MIT App Inventor 2 interface, and once again, this is web browser hosted. And this first page just allows you to build your interface. So they have components such as buttons. You can see I already have a button on there for get data, but you just sort of drag and drop. You know, here's a label, here's a text box. Uh, I have some, they call them non-visible components. I have some web components because we need these web components to communicate with the cloud to get the data. So if you remember the Arduino code, we had these client objects. These are almost you can think of as the client objects that are used to get the data. You can't see them, but I also have image objects, and that's what I use to display the sun, the, the clouds with, with some sun, which you didn't see, and then the moon. So this is the interface, how you build it up. If I go to the blocks, this is where the actual programming is done. So, um, so for instance, if this is graphical programming, so if you're new to this, it might look a little confusing at first, but trust me, it's not hard to use once you get rolling. So for instance, here's how you would do an if statement, here's how you do a for loop, here's how you do some math functions, minus, times. 
you also have functions and procedures available for just the objects like the button one here's a function that's called if the button is pressed uh, you even have them for the web tools so on and so forth so that's where I'm getting these components that you see out there so let's start right here and I'll mention you know I recommend if you're if you want to use this and build on it and modify it that you may want to do some you know beginner tutorials in MIT App Inventor 2 first just to get a feel for how everything works before you dive into this but this function is when the button is clicked I call another function which is do web stuff here is do web stuff and then I have my web 1 and web 2 objects remember these are like the client objects in the Arduino code that we showed in part 1 so first I set the URL and here I once again I you have, to, you have to change the key value here but change it to your key and remember what I just showed equals Wi-Fi node 2 and 1 so that'll filter out the data for 2 and for 1 uh, for grabbing the data for the separate temperature as well as the light sensor reading then I call the actual function web 1 this triggers an event and these are the event handlers so when I call web 1 and this is where it gets a, it starts to get a little confusing if you're not if you're new to this but I call web 1 these boxes response content is actual what what is actually calling the text so if you remember in the web browser you see all that text here's where it's where it can be called from and then what happens here is I need to parse out to get the ADC reading so what I do is I go out 28 characters because that's how many I counted out I grab the first one and I don't know how long the ADC number is it could be 5 it could be 50 it could be 500 so what I do is I have this while loop and I'm checking it each character I grab if it's a number and if it is a number I start to build it into an ADC value using times by 10 until finally I don't get a number then I jump out of the loop I know that's my ADC value and then for here I turn that ADC value into a voltage and then I turn it into a temperature using the you know the the algorithm that they give you in the T TMP 36 data sheet and then at the very last step I turn it I add you know degrees Celsius and I display it on the text box and that's what you saw in the uh, the app example now I will mention if this looks a little too confusing at first I have this these disabled blocks so this is a this is web one is the same thing as this other block right here but all I do here is I have the text box and I get the response code so what I'm doing here is I say just put all the text from the response in text box one so if you want to you know just kind of see things happen a little simpler you would just click on this and disable this block and then this block is currently disabled you would enable this block you can't have them both enabled at the same time and I did the same thing for web 2 just if you want to make things a little simpler to get started then in web 2 I do the same thing I have to parse through the data uh, to get the ADC value and then the second part's a little different though I have a if else statement where <clears throat> I'm just checking the value of the ADC and based on it I'm saying okay it's it's visible light so I display the Sun you know it's only partial light so display the Sun with some clouds and there's no light so display the moon that's all I'm doing here and once again this is meant to just be an example simple example for you to build on if you want to make a more complex app for monitoring you know Wi-Fi sensors so to access this you need a dot AIA file it's called and in the description of the video as well as my blog I'll have a link to download it so you can uh, leverage this if you want to okay that's it for part two if you have anything to add or any comments uh, corrections whatever use the comment section in the video we'll see you back here for part three where we use the Android app to actually send data to control the Arduinos so we, right now we just have the Arduinos collecting data and the Android app displaying it now we'll send data to the Arduinos to, to use to control them so now we're getting sort of a two-way information flow and whether you just want a sensor network or if you want home automation or some combination you can actually then do sort of this back and forth and that's what we'll look for in part three once again if you need a maker 1000 check out my store forstronics.com and thank you for watching